That's right, we're in space today. Welcome back, my darling little angels. Today, we are going to be talking about metronomes. That's right, those sneaky, stinky little bastards in the subway. <laughs> and then they steal your money and your food and your baby. Oh, wrong metronome? Oh, yes, that's right. Metronomes, not metro. Gnomes? Oh, I'm so, so silly of me. A metronome is a device that produces an audible click or other sound at a uniform interval that can be set by the user, typically in beats per minute. I'm going to show you some ways in which you can utilize the click in your practice routine and make it fun and challenging and exciting. I understand the need for us drummers to just get behind the kit and go... What we don't often realize, regardless of how long we've been playing, is that the fundamentals are extremely important and we need to keep returning to them every now and then so that we can stay on top of the game. The first most basic exercise, keep your click at a reasonable tempo, between 60 to 80 BPM. And instead of doing this, do this. You will not believe how difficult that is. Yes, you can have all the chops in the world. You can be playing double bass and blast beats at 420, 69 BPM. Just breaking it down, going down to the absolute basics and seeing how much and how impactful you could play with the bare minimum. Alternating quarter notes with the kick and the snare, the hi-hat on every quarter note and try your best not to flap because playing flams makes you flimsy. Flams do have their utilities in different scenarios, but for the sake of this exercise, just keep it tight and bury that click. Try your best to be playing so tight that you're in absolute true unison with the sound of the click. See how long you can keep that going. And the more and more you go along, make it busier a little by little. Instead of quarter notes on the hats, play eighth notes. Eighth note triplets. Sixteenth notes. And that's when you can start the amazing process known as superimposition. So what do I mean when I say superimposition? I'll just show you. Taka, 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 takita, 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 taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka dimmi, taka takita, taka takita, taka takita, taka takita, kita takita, 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 taka dimmi, 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 taka jono, taka dimmi, taka jono, taka dimmi, taka jono, taka dimmi, taka jono, boom. So what are you basically doing? is superimposing different numbers within the click and this is going to give you a really strong sense of spatial awareness so obviously first speak it before you can play it so that you really internalize the feel of these numbers and then apply it to the drum kit practice this over and over and over again really really imbibe this information that you're getting and until it's second nature and then just improvise with it take your twos, fours, eights, sixteens, your binary numbers. Take your threes, sixes, twelves, twenty fours, tertiary. Fives, tens, twenties, quinary, I think. Your 
sevens, fourteens, twenty eights, your septenary numbers. And improvise within those confines and see what you can come up with. It is so much fun to do that once you're comfortable with superimposition. Oh, these are also called tuplets, by the way. Triplets, quintuplets, septuplets, you can get nonuplets, sextuplets. Oh, do you want to give yourself some good old fashioned temporal constipation? Try playing at 30 BPM. There has been some extensive research over the years claiming that 33 BPM is the lowest limit of our perception of time as human beings, also stated by Philip Fries in his book Psychology of Time. I haven't read the book, I just happened to watch a lot of Adam Neely videos. Just like how superimposition really strengthens our spatial awareness, so too does playing at extremely low tempos. When you play at 30 BPM, you don't have a click on every beat, tethering you to time. You just have the one. It's up to you to keep that in time and to keep it steady. And yeah, sure, 33 BPM might be the lower limit, of course. But I, I was practicing at 30 BPM before I found that out. And it is incredibly difficult and I have fumbled many times and picked myself back up. But you know what, if that really bothers you, just, just play 33, man. It's it's okay. It's cool. Just just take it chill. Take it easy. Alright? You can you can relax. You don't need to just, you just be a little crybaby. There was absolutely no reason for me to gaslight you there. But I thought it was funny, so hey, yeah, why, 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 why not? Why? If you want to go a little bit further with the duplets, with the superimposition, we can you know, just slightly dip our toes in polymetric practices. Now I know a lot of you might be like, why polyrhythms, man? It's, it's not groovy. It doesn't, it doesn't groove, you know? We need, it needs to be groovy. Where is the feel, huh? Where is the feel? It has no feel, you f And to that, I say, shove it up your ass. You can absolutely make polymeters feel great. And once again, just like how we have a perception of time, each person has a different perception of enjoyment of different rhythms. So stop being an elitist. As I stated earlier, develop your verbal discipline first. So let's go to 16th notes. And in the 16th notes, highlight every third beat to start. You can count in any way you want, but for the purposes of this, let's just go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Take it a step further than that. Highlight every fifth beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You're starting to get the idea, right? So this is a subject that I have to dedicate a whole separate video to. But you know, here's a little teaser, little little uh, tickling of the taint, if you so will. And the possibilities are endless. You can also have a triple layered polyrhythm. Okay, I'm just gonna do it, right? So Imagine that you are in 16th notes, you're in a 4 based grid, you're highlighting every 3rd beat with your right hand and you're highlighting the 1 and the 3 of every group of 5 with your kick. This is how that sounds. But let's not digress too far. Let's return to the matter at hand. There is one more exercise which will give you an existential hernia once you start practicing it. It is subdivisional displacement. So get behind your kit, put a click on at say 60 to 80 BPM and just play. You were thinking of the click as being on the one, right? We are going to change that. Now let's think of the click as being on the and. 
For the purposes of this exercise, let's go with one e and -er. So one e and -er, two e and -er, three e and -er, four e and -er. Think of the click as being on the e. One e and -er, two e and -er, three e and -er, four e and -er. And finally, think of it as being on the a. Uh. One e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a. Uh. I assure you, this will scramble your brains in the most beautiful way. So more often than not, we tend to neglect the utility of each of the subdivisions, especially E and a. Uh. The weak beats, as they are so popularly called, I despise that term because you know what? They're not weak, AJ. They're just in different parts of the fucking grid. And this sort of nomenclature has really hurt our overall perception of these subdivisions. It has caused a sort of placebifying of these beats in our collective consciousness as musicians. Like I said, each of the subdivisions serve their own utility. For example, the one, the one feels like home. The one is assuring, it's got confidence, it's got certainty. Initiating a handshake to start a conversation. Marching, you're always marching on the one. Throwing a ball or just any initiative action. That's what the one feels like, it's home. The anchor that roots everything in place. If the one is the initiative action, then the and is going to be the reciprocative action. Someone sticks their hand out for a handshake, without a second thought, you respond to it. It's like playing tennis. You serve the ball, you hit it back. That's why if you go to the club, you're dancing, you're busting out all your cool moves. Because in truth, you're feeling the and. You're responding to the music. That's an and. The E stands for evil because the E is a sneaky little The E feels like an unexpected reaction. If you get slapped in the face right now, would you respond like Ow! Or Ow! Or Ow! Imagine that you're watching a horror movie and a freaky little piece of shit jumps out from behind the corner and gives you a jump scare. You're gonna go like, ooh! Imagine that you're conscripted into King Theoden's army and you're chilling in Rohan. And then the beacons are lit, the horn is blown, you jump immediately into action because Gondor calls for aid. If the E is an unexpected reaction, the AND is a reciprocative reaction, then the A uh is going to be an expected reaction. It's going to be anticipation. The A uh feels like jumping off from a diving board like 50 feet in the air and you jump and there's a few seconds of bracing for impact is like pulling a bowstring all the way back with the arrow until you reach that point of maximum potential energy and then you let the arrow go. You're anticipating it. Your cat knocks a priceless Ming Dynasty vase from the top shelf and you see it fall in slow motion. That is the A. Uh. Just with 16th note combinations, there's so much you can do. I implore you to learn all the combinations. I will put them up right here. Take a screenshot of that, don't forget. So I hope this video has been informative, helpful and entertaining. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Before you go though, See that little button down there? Click on it. Subscribe to my channel so you can stay updated with more cool information. And interaction is also very helpful. So I'm just starting my channel. I have 69 subscribers as making of this video. Nice. If you have any suggestions for future video ideas relating to music or metal or drums, drop them down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. So until then, bye, bye, bye.